Yo, what's up, dude? <laughs> How's it going? So uh, Bobby came by and he left a couple of Squires here for me to check out that he had picked up a uh, Squire, a standard and a Squire uh, Deluxe. And I realized I have quite a few Squires sort of in the lineup that's available right now. So I thought maybe we could do a little Squire roundup and we can take a look at the various Squires uh, that are on the market and we can rate them and uh, see which ones are worth uh, buying and which ones aren't. Um, I'm going to start from worst and end with the best. So this is the worst one <laughs> by far. Uh, this is a Crafted in China Squire Strat. Uh, you'll notice it has a black logo with no gold in it. That's actually a big indicator from what I've found. If it has the gold logo, it seems to be um, much nicer. And when it has the all black logo, not so much. Uh, also, if it says Affinity in the top, I don't have one here, but I've played plenty of them. Uh, the affinities are like this quality, which is not that good. Um, the neck, and I put a, um, a caliper on it, the neck is a good millimeter thicker depth-wise, which if you're a student, that's not helping, right? You're much better off if you're a parent, you're going to buy a guitar for your, uh, for your son or daughter uh, to have them start out, and you're not going to get a mini guitar, you're going to get a full-size guitar. I would avoid these squires, uh, this particular model here. There are plenty of squires that are great. This isn't one of them, all right? So um, this is, I think, called the Squire Bullet. Uh, this came with an amplifier. It was given to me by a friend who got it a, like a house clean out, and uh, he had no interest in it, and he gave me this, and it came with a small amp. Uh, the amp died very quickly. It, it got to the point where you just turn it on, it would just squeal and went right out in the trash. And, um, it, you know, we, we kept the guitar, but to be honest, it's a, a, not an easy guitar to play. And, uh, and that's coming from someone who can actually play guitar. So I can imagine someone starting out saying, like, wow, this is actually really hard. And I agree. <laughs> Playing this guitar actually is really hard. The neck is fairly thick. Um, the, uh, the action is terrible. I suppose that could be set up. The pickups are not that great. Um, just overall, it's not a... Not that great a guitar. Um, you look at the bridge. Um, it's it, it's the quality is noticeably worse than even the next model up. So um, it, it's a little bit more money. These are one twenty nine new used. I wouldn't pay more than twenty or thirty bucks for it. Seriously, um, I certainly wouldn't pay more than fifty. And because remember this for your one twenty nine, I think came with an amp. <laughs> so. Right? I mean, how much can the guitar possibly be worth? But maybe the amp combo is more money. But I believe these go for $129. Um, I would not buy one of these if I were you. I would skip it and spend a little bit more money and get the next one up. So um, let's take a, a look. At, just to, to wrap up, black logo, if it says Affinity at the top. This one doesn't. But if it does say Affinity, skip those models. I'm sure if someone has one out there that they've worked up uh, to play nice, but uh, most people who are starting out aren't going to do that. So um, uh, I would avoid this. So let's go and we'll move up to the next model uh, in the range, and we can check that one out, and I can show you all the reasons why that one is much better than this, and, um, and we'll check it out. All right, guys, I'll see you in a second. All right, dudes, we're back. Uh, I've got the next model up in the line. This is called the Squire Standard. Now... Uh, you want to look for the little standard logo up here. You'll notice it has the larger headstock, right? There's two uh, Fender headstocks. So this is the large, and the one you saw before is the small. And they use both, and they don't really signify anything. It's just the style Fender happens to want to use at the moment. So I wouldn't look at one and say, like, well, the large headstock is the good model, and the small headstock is. It doesn't work that way, all right? So um, it's just really a matter of style. But the neck on this is like a billion times better than that last one. It's much smaller. Uh, it's a good millimeter or two millimeters thinner front to back. It's much more comfortable. The frets are, are, are beautifully you know, polished at the end compared to that last one, which was just put it in, clip it, and 
slight, if anything. These are much, much better attention to detail. This is not made in China. This is made in Indonesia and uh, by court. And, um, and th this is an IC model, Indonesia court. So um, the pickups are better. The bridge is better. If you notice, it's got a two-point bridge with, um, with the more modern saddles, right, uh, instead of the older uh, saddles. Huge difference in whether it stays in tune, whether it's intonated. Now, the pickups are better than those last. I mean, you couldn't get much worse, <laughs> right? You have to admit, they're, they are better. Couldn't get much worse. Uh, that is, uh, you know, unfortunately, the, the thing that you get with low-end guitars, you're not going to get great pickups. Um, these are a little bit better, but um, they're still not great. I think the next model up uh, has a big uh, it change in, in the pickups. Kind of bright. But still, these are 219 new. Uh, if you were looking for one used, I see them for between 100 and 150 uh, on a pretty regular basis. Generally, right around 120, 130 bucks used. Um, that's a really, really good uh, price for a guitar of this quality. You couldn't get a guitar of this quality for that kind of money, uh, you know, back in the 80s. And back in the 80s, you know, a hundred and you know, $219 guitar in today's dollars would be like probably double or even triple that. So uh, at least double. So I would um, uh, definitely say these are worth your money, worth to buy. Uh, if you're a parent out there and you're looking to get one for a, your, your son or daughter, these are really good. Uh, and probably, uh, you know, one of the best values. It uses an oil finish neck, so it's going to feel like natural wood, but it's very smooth. Um and very comfortable to play. Uh, they can be easily set up. Uh, Bobby has this set with his action a little bit lower than I like, but you can set it wherever you want, and you don't have to worry about buzzing and things like that. It, it, it's been a surprisingly good guitar. So, uh, And the finish quality is really good. Again, just to go from China to Indonesia, uh, huge difference in quality, and uh, for a little bit more money, um, that first rung, because they can only make the guitar so cheap. So when you go from 219 down to like $129, that $90 drop, it really, really takes a hit on the quality of the guitar. So if you want to say like, well, what's the cheapest Squire I can get? Really, it's this one, because those other Squires just they're not worth your time and money. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even uh, look at them as a viable option. So Squire standard. All right. So let's see what a little bit more money gets you, and uh, we'll come back and we'll take a look at the next one in the series. All right, see you in a sec. All right, we're back. Uh, this is uh, a slightly more money than the Deluxe. Um, this is called the uh, Vintage Modified. Uh, the big difference you can see right away is that it has a rosewood fingerboard and it has a glossy neck. So instead of a... Um, you know, a natural finished neck, it uses the gloss neck. Now, we can debate whether people like the gloss or the or the natural wood. I kind of like the gloss. Some people are real fans of the natural wood. I go back and forth. I think I like the natural wood more on like a Charvel or whatever, but uh, it's just really a feel thing. Um, but you'll pay to have that that feature, um, to have them spray the neck with a, probably either polyester or polyurethane. Probably polyurethane. Um, the body's made out of basswood. The standard that we just looked at was agathis. Um, it doesn't really make a huge difference. It's really a weight thing. You're not going to hear a big difference in tone. There's no guitar player out there that listens to it and says, oh, boy, you can really hear the agathis on that, or you can really hear the basswood on that. Eh, not really. It's really the pickups that make a big difference, and there is a big difference with these pickups because these are the first ones that are Duncan designed. So uh, for your... The other one had a 229 or a 219 is what it sold for. These are 249 new. I see them all the time for between 150 and 200 bucks used. Really, between like 165 and 175 is pretty common. For that kind of money, this is an insane, insanely good deal on a guitar. It really is. Um, I love the the playability. Uh, when my bro comes over. He goes to this one all the time. Last time he was over, he's like, you've got to sell me this guitar. He goes, I love this. There's something about this guitar I just really love. And I, and I know what he's talking about. You know, it really is, uh, you know, a nice instrument. 
Um, you go more to the traditional bridge uh, than the two point. Uh, because again, they want this to be a vintage modified. So a lot of the features for the vintage come out, and you know, are, are a part of this. Uh, these are great guitars. They really are. <laughs> see the back it's got a nice finish to it the finish is great and if you notice they don't they don't paint right in here see this little section right in here that is commonly painted because um the body's made out of plywood if you see this and the paint goes all the way down into this cut it's because the body's been painted over where you would see the seams for the different layers of the plywood right this is a solid wood body without plywood right it's just it's, it's three blocks what we would call a butcher block that's actually pretty common um some of the most expensive and famous makers you have to use blocks because they just can't get a single slab large enough to make the body i mean it's really that simple so um don't let blocks worry you but the um plywood is a problem because um oh it's heavier because there's more glue content really it comes down to weight they feel stiffer and they're so dense they don't really resonate uh very much and because of that there's not a lot of absorption and they sound really bright in my opinion so um because you're not really getting a lot of absorption in the body because the body has so much glue it doesn't really vibrate that well so um i i would stick with with these uh this one is made in indonesia again it's a, again it's a court um it, look for the cutaway to be fully painted that's a big clue and um you know if you're looking for a more of a vintage vibe um you know over the standard these are these are awesome guitars i think that i've said it many times i think this this particular guitar is one of the best values in the squire series all right guys that's the vintage modified let's see what a little bit more money gets here i think we're up to 249 let's see what you can get at the 299 price point i'll be back in a second and we'll check out the squire deluxe see you in a second all right dudes we're back now we have the squire deluxe series again still made in indonesia so the first guitar we looked at was made in china but this one and the la and the prior two were made in Indonesia, and I can tell you the Indonesia, they're nicer. They really are. Um, I think that's where Ibanez is doing their prestige line. So whatever they're doing in Indonesia, they're, they're doing it right. Um, beautiful perloid um, finish to the guitar. It's gorgeous. Uh, it's got the uh, natural oiled, you know, wood feel to the neck. Very smooth. I put the micrometer on it. It's still, it's a touch smaller than either the vintage modified or the standard. You know, you shave off about a half a mil. And that's great because the smaller necks, especially if you're a student and you're starting out, they're more comfortable. Uh, the nut on this looks to me more like a synthetic bone rather than the plastic. Um, the uh, It's got the nice three-ply uh, pick guard. And the, uh, the pickups are Duncan designed, right? So you're getting these a little bit more... Uh, thought goes into the production of the pickups and uh, they're not made by Duncan but Duncan designs it and says listen this is how you should set up your equipment to, to run it and uh, they, they give them you know sort of the uh, the design to make it but Duncan themselves don't make it. that's why they call it Duncan designed and not just Steve or Duncan we're back to the modern bridge so two-point fulcrum on the front with the more modern saddles. Again, very comfortable in the hand. If you're resting your hand on the bridge, it's, it, it feels comfortable when you're playing it. Um, the, the switches and everything have a nice, strong feel to them. Um, you know, just overall, the guitar is, you know, certainly a deluxe model, as they, as they claim it to be. Um, sealed tuners. So the first, um, the, the standard had sealed tuners um and then the um the vintage modified has the more vintage covered tuners um and uh these are a little bit better just a little bit so they could be the same maybe i'm just imagining it but they they do feel a little nicer so there's the 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 deluxe um great guitar these are 299 new i see them all the time for between say geez as low as i think i've seen them as low as like 175 150 you know and then 
you know, in the low twos pretty commonly. Um, these are nice. These are definitely nice. Um, uh, don't let the cork sniffers tell you otherwise. <laughs> right. Uh, all right, so we have two more guitars to check out. Uh, I'll be back in a sec, and we'll take a look at the next one up. This has a two ninety nine retail. Let's see what you get if you spend eighty bucks more. Let's say you're paying three seventy nine on the retail. What does that get you when you move there? All right, be back in a sec. All right, dudes, we're back. <laughs> This is the classic Vibe series. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have a Strat. Uh, I had a 60s uh, Strat, but I traded it uh, for an Ibanez uh, a while ago. So the only classic Vibe I have in-house right now is the Tele. Um, this has a pine body. The Strat would have an alder body. The last uh, three guitars we looked at, the... I'm sorry, the last two we looked at, both the Deluxe and the Vintage Modified, both had basswood bodies, um, and the Standard had an Agathis body. And I believe the Bullet had a basswood body, and uh, this is Pine. You can also, I believe, get it in Alder if you got the, the Vintage. Um, they make a different uh, color, and that makes a... Uh, this one, they made Pine because they wanted it to look good through the... Um, the, the the finish, right, because you can see the wood through the finish on this. Uh, that's one reason. The second reason is, is that they actually used pine in some of the early fenders. So it was correct, and uh, that's what they were going for. You get the vintage tuners. Um, you get the vintage hardware. If you had the Strat, it would be the same. It would be the vintage and the vintage and, you know, and so forth. Uh, they make the Strat in two versions, uh, um, a maple uh, fingerboard uh, for the 50s model um, and a single-ply pickguard. Um, in the more 50s uh, voiced uh, pickups and then they make it in the 60s with a rosewood fingerboard and a triple ply pickguard and, and so forth and they make two different or three different tellies uh, they make the butterscotch they make a white a vintage white and they make a custom which is a sunburst with a rosewood so these classic vibes are amazing we get back to china of all places it's like clearly they can't be made in the same factory as that bullet was because uh, the quality on this is just through the roof compared to what that was. Uh, these are really, really well-made instruments. The classic vibe is just, it's revered. I mean, I'm not the only one. If you go around the internet, you will find uh, thousands of satisfied customers with the classic vibe series. And for a good reason. They're really good guitars, and they're fairly inexpensive. Uh, 379 new. I paid 199 for this guitar. Good luck getting a guitar of this quality for 199 uh, anywhere but with a used classic vibe. I mean, they're just amazing. Um, you know, if you're a parent and you're looking at a classic vibe, definitely buy it. They're really, really well-made instruments. You know, it might need a setup or whatever, but um, they're good. Uh, the pickups are a little nicer than the prior models. Uh, I really like the pickups on the 60s version. I thought it sounded great. Um, uh, I've heard great things about the 50s version. People swear by these tellies. I've seen some of these tellies with gorgeous flame maple necks that just happen to make it through on the classic Vibe series of all series. Uh, I saw a um, the one of the telly customs that had a beautiful flame maple neck. And I was like, wow, there's one that slipped through the cracks, you know. So uh, keep your eye out, um, but don't balk at, at, at a Squire just because it says Squire on it. Um, these are really, really well-made instruments and worth your time and money, um, it, you know, to, 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 to you know, check one out and to um, uh, give it a little road test uh, in the store. Um, do I have another uh, Squire? I do. I have one more Squire to check out, um, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that. But the classic vibe, good series. Uh, you know, if you can get one for $199, uh, or really even anything under 249 good they're good value really really good value very well made um, so the uh, classic vibe big thumbs up all right let's go and check out uh, I have one more strat to check out and uh, this is the last of the squires all right I'll see you in a sec all right dudes we're back <laughs> This is a vintage Squire, and by vintage I mean not a, a nod to vintage Fender instruments, but literally a guitar that was built 
uh, 32 years ago. Uh, this is a 1983 Squire SQ series. Uh, the year before, in 82, they made the JV. Those sell for a lot more money. Uh, the JVs, you can expect to pay 500 and up for, uh, sometimes even close to 1,000. People really collect them, and because they're around for such a short period, and they're so revered, um, you're going to pay for those. The SQs, I think, were maybe, for whatever reason, don't have as much mojo as the first year. Uh, so, uh, you know, these are... Cheaper. I see them out there, four ninety nine, five ninety nine, but that's a little pricey. I paid three twenty nine for this one. So they had it um, at Guitar Center used for three forty nine, and I've seen a few of them on there between three forty nine and three ninety nine. I had someone say like, the, you're, the, "Those prices are crazy. No one sells them for that." Well, maybe you don't sell them for that, but some people do. <laughs> so keep, be patient, and you can find one of these. Uh, because it's Japanese made, the quality is just through the roof. It's it's just incredibly well made uh, instrument. Uh, it uses a an odd wood for the body. It uses sen ash, uh, S E N, or just sen for short. Uh, it has nothing to do with the ash tree. <laughs> it's like nothing like an American ash or a swamp ash or anything like that. Uh, they called it sen ash because the grain just looked like ash, but it's just a you know a, a look comparison but they're really not related uh, to each other it's got a beautiful um you know one piece maple neck with no separate fingerboard skunk stripe in the back to get the truss rod in it's got a little bit of moderate flaming on it and um the tuning gears are much better in terms of their their turn ratio they're very silky very smooth uh, the pickups are nicer the pots feel nicer um, you know, the bridge is a little bit more heavy. Just all around, these are nicer. And if you can find a Japanese Squire, uh, that's going to be the probably the best Squire you're going to be able to find. Now, a couple of you people are going to say, well, what about the USA Squires? Uh, it was a pretty short window. Good luck finding one. There, there are not a lot of them out there. Uh, I haven't, I think I've played maybe one US, true USA Squire, and I, there was nothing particularly memorable about it it was like okay um you'll, you'll pay a lot for those american squires so you really um you know have to try one out and see if it's it's really worth the money some people are selling it more for the uh the rarity of it and the collectability that rather than the actual um the guitar's playability itself so uh you know once you start getting it to five or six hundred dollars you know on these guitars you could buy you know, a used american um you know, jeez, uh, the, uh, the the what do they call that? The road, Highway One is one, and they have a not the Roadhouse. I think that's made in Mexico, but they have a couple that are pretty inexpensive because they do things they you know a little bit less on the body. They're it's a matte finish instead of a gloss finish. They find ways to, to, to shave a few dollars, and I swear, sometimes I think they're making a lot of the parts down in Mexico and just shipping them straight up to. The, Cal the Corona plant and assembling it up there and calling it Made in the USA. So um, uh, those are going to be inexpensive. So when you get down, when I get see anything around 550 to 650 I know I could probably get an American-made Strat, um, maybe not an American Standard, probably another 100 maybe 200 bucks for an American Standard used, but certainly you could get an American-made Strat, you know, for that kind of money. So if you can find one of these, uh, I wouldn't pay more than four fifty, five hundred bucks for one. Uh, people will tell you they're worth, uh, you know, a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred. They're not. Um, you'll find one out there. Just, just be patient. Hold out, and you will get one. Like I said, when I bought this one, they had three models up there at the time, and I think they were three forty nine, three forty nine, and three ninety nine. And um, I thought this was the cleanest one at three forty nine, and it had been up there a little bit. And so we were able to talk them down another 30 bucks, uh, and which is really like less than 10% off, but I'll take it. So um, that's it. That's the Squire Roundup. Uh, that first one, I would avoid at all costs. I would avoid affinity at all costs. Um, the, really, the first one in the series would be the, the Deluxe uh, and then the Vintage Modified. And uh, really that, uh, I mean, the, uh, the Standard, then the Vintage Modified. And, uh, you know, in the deluxe series, uh, I think the nicest of what they're producing right now is the classic vibe. Um, it, it's just a, an amazingly well-made instrument. All right, guys. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the Squire Roundup. 
and I'll be back uh, with uh, something else at some point. <laughs> Until then, rock on.